Welcome to the Tuck Shop Podcast. As always, I'm Matt Cernell, but not recording quite on campus here today. I'm in an undisclosed location. Not anything super serious. A little bit under the weather. Didn't want to didn't want to get David exposed to something, but I certainly not going to let the show go without a episode on a week, especially as we head into spring break. But I think we may even have something for next week. We may not even take spring break off. David did want to, did want me to talk about though before we welcome today's guest, the engineering and computer science reunion. We've talked a good bit over the last several months of this show about the 50th anniversary reunions of becoming a, uh, when we turned into a four-year degree-granting institution. Well, engineering and computer science is coming up. Theirs will be the, um, uh, will be starting uh, with events anywhere from March 13th through the 20th. The 13th includes a family picnic along with educational and engineering um, activities. There's a speaker series that week, as well as a dinner on the 20th. If you are a member of the Engineering and Computer Science alumni, and you haven't gotten an email or a text message or a invitation yet, probably means you don't have your information updated at um, the pit site for for David and the Institutional Advancement Office to connect to. So what you can do, though, is if you'd like to register, you can go to pi.tt slash e-c-s-r-e-u-n-i-o-n-24. That's pi.tt slash E C S Reunion 24, or reach out to David Janicek at Institutional Advancement at 814 269 2081, and he'll get you all that information. Again, middle of March here, coming up on the 13th, Engineering and Computer Science Reunion 2024. I talked to Tanya down there in engineering the other day. They are excited. I think they're going to have some really cool activities for everyone to to take a part in. And the speaker series is going to be great. Um, the former guest on the show, um, Don Freeburn, I believe is going to be a part of some of those events as well. And I encourage everyone to take um, the chance to go and, and spend some time with our great engineers. So without further delay, oh, I also want to plug at the end of May, May 31st, um, upj.pit.edu slash alumni golf you will be able to go to our golf tournament. UPJ, I'm just double-checking the link here, folks. Pitt EDU Alumni Golf. Yes, I am 100% uh, correct. UPJ.pitt.edu slash alumni golf will get you to the information for the alumni golf tournament. Most of that will go to, um, most of that profits or proceeds raised there will go to scholarships. And oddly enough... Today's guest is going to talk to us a little bit about his story and his UPJ tale and scholarships. Dr. Doug Letney from over in education. It's great to be here, Matt. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking some time. Doug, for those who don't know your story, how did you, because you're not just a member of the faculty, you're also an alumni. How did you start at UPJ? What brought you to UPJ? Well, I, back in the day when I was uh, still in high school, and I'll date myself, that was the late 80s, I was uh, interested, always had an interest in becoming a teacher. And I know UPJ had a wonderful uh, education department at that time, division, and uh, I thought this would be the great place for me to go, learn how to become a teacher and impact the future students when you so what you did came so you came in right away knowing teaching education nothing had ever well, actually to be honest with you i came in undecided but i always was leaning towards teaching so i took a semester of being undecided decided that i would like to be a teacher and then that's when i switched from undecided to becoming a, a teacher and really the 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 nice thing about it was the staff and the faculty 
uh, you know, I can't say enough about it. And, you know, I, I think that we are still that way today where we, we want the students to um, enjoy themselves. We want them obviously to learn, um, but to be those teachers that impact the future of our students. Um, and uh, as most of us know, teaching is in such high demand right now. Um, there aren't enough teachers for the demand. Due to, due to various reasons, a lot of retirements, a lot of retirements due to the pandemic a few years ago. Um, so it is a, it, it, and it is a nice career. Um, and it's something that I always enjoyed. So you spent your uh, years here, um, graduated, then immediately went into teaching. Did you, because as I mentioned when I introduced you, you are Dr. Doug Letney. So you apparently mm -hmm. continued some process, unless... <laughs> Right, right, sure. Um, what I did is, you know, a little bit of my background. I, I came to UPJ, loved it, loved my four years, and they flew by, um, which is a good thing because that means the old saying, when you like something, it goes fast, and, and it certainly did. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get a job here in the area at a local school district, and um, which was, truthfully, which was, I was blessed with that because back at that time, uh, teaching jobs weren't as prevalent as they are today. Uh, so I kind of I graduated and I kind of decided that I was going to substitute for a while. Most of my friends were going to Maryland to get jobs. Um, there were positions available in Maryland. So I was like, OK, I want to get my master's degree. I will sub for a little bit. And then I was going to head down with my friends. We all kept in contact and was going to head down there. So I did that. Uh, and then late in the summer, as some of uh, some folks that are listening out there, uh, it was actually a week before school started that year. I got a call from the superintendent's uh, administrative assistant, and she asked me to come in for an interview. And I did. And I was interviewed by uh, several administrators. And then that evening, the superintendent called me and said he would like to speak with me and uh, if I could come in the following days, which I did. Uh, and then uh, lo and behold, um, they, they were having a school board meeting the following week, which was a Tuesday. And he told me, I'll call you on Wednesday, uh, you know, uh, how the school board decides to vote and so forth. So he called me on Wednesday. I was fortunate enough to get the job. That was Wednesday. Thursday, I met with the principal, kind of had a little one on one with the principal for a little bit. And then Friday, school started. Oh, wow. So it, was act it was actually an in service day. So I had like maybe 36 hours to get ready for the school year. Uh, and then the students came in that following Monday. So um, it was a, a very quick process. And as I said, I was blessed to basically graduate and then in a few months have a position that uh, I could that I was a you know full time teacher. So kind of my dream was coming true. Having having education folks in the family, knowing that sometimes that summer period is very helpful to prep for the nine months that comes after it, that exactly. if you don't use all three months, it's still month and a half or two months worth of prep time. So you condensed all that into 36 hours. Exactly. And um, there was a lot of, you know, being a recent graduate, there was still curriculum that I had to learn. So there was a great big learning curve there that was all crammed into probably one, uh, 36 hours and one in service day until the students came. Wow. Uh, th then the students came and, and it was wonderful. And I spent my career, um, I was a teacher for, um, for 18 years. And then I kind of got, um, if you will, the administrative bug. I wanted to, I, I had a great, great teaching career. Well, loved it. Um, but I wanted to affect some change and, and things, you know, outside of my classroom. I had control of my classroom, but not in some of those other details. So I decided to go back to school. I did. And I got my uh, principal certification. And then a few years later, I still remain a teacher. And a few years later, I had the opportunity to become a um, principal at, at an elementary school here in the area. And I did that for, for about four years. And then um, some people retired within my district and I was asked to move to the middle school. So I moved to the middle school and I became a middle school principal for, for years and enjoyed it. And I know I'm smiling because everybody says, oh, middle school, middle school. You know what? I love the middle school. Um, the students are unique. Uh, sometimes they they get the rap of, oh, there's hormones running down the hall. Uh, but they were wonderful. You, you, I, and I truly enjoyed my time at the elementary school. 
um, work, get an opportunity to work with wonderful people and middle school, wonderful people too. So it was, it was kind of nice to move up uh, working with the younger children for most of my career to move up to the older students with middle and middle and high school, uh, a little bit of high school as well. From there, uh, I moved into what is called a federal programs director and I handled uh, kind of central office duties um, and took care of grant writing and all things natured and transportation and Title I, which is a program from the federal government. So kind of handled all those things. And then a few years ago, um, I had an opportunity to come back to the place that started it all for me, which was Pitt Johnstown. And I uh, have been doing that now for several years. I've become the director of field practicums and clinical experiences. So I place all of our students. I was going to ask you, why don't you talk a little bit um, about what that means for those of us who are, are I, I'm a social scientist, Doug. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm out here doing completely different field work than what you, but it's field work. I, hate to say, I look, would look at it from my side when I send my students out. It's field work to go study a neighborhood in Johnstown or go look at a soil pit or something or, or look at drone footage and compare it to what you see out you're sending Phil, but what does that look like for you in that position? Yeah, sure. So my job now is I, I'm considered a university supervisor. So what I do is uh, as the students progress through their career, what we like to do and what's one of the nice features of, of Pitt Johnstown's education division is we want to get the students out into the schools as soon as we can. So right away in your either probably your first or second term of your sophomore year, we have a, a certain class we call history and philosophy education. And we send you to a local school district in the area, not to teach, but just to get out, work with some students uh, and observe the teacher in action. And that's the class that kind of says, yes, I want to be a teacher or no, I don't. Or I thought I liked the younger students, but I'd rather teach the older students or, or vice versa. So we like to get you out there, um, like kind of like with me, I, I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to be a teacher, but there are some students that are, well, I'm not sure, I'd like to, I'm not sure. Well, that's the class that gets you right out. Then as you progress through, um, and I'll start out with like our early childhood special education, um, you can major in, or, or I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. Oh, you can, you can, um, you can major in early childhood or special education just kind of straight up, or you can have a dual certification is what we call, and that is early childhood and special education. So when you graduate, you could teach the younger students from pre-kindergarten to fourth grade and special education from kindergarten through 12. So you'd come out with two certifications. Um, so with that, we have what is called field practicum one, two, and three. So one semester, you are in field practicum one. We place you in area schools with the youngest students, like pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students, so four or five-year-old students. Then field practicum two, uh, we work with a local school at a like an urban setting or a city setting, and we give you exposure to, to students of that nature. And then we field practicum three, that's the practicum. We're kind of refining your skills before you student teach. And we get you out into area schools. And then finally, the following, um, the following semester, you would do your student teaching for a whole semester. If, and this is one of the nice things about UPJ, if you are a early childhood special education um, certification student, you student teach for a whole year. So in the fall, for example, you would do your early childhood student teaching. So that would be in grades one, or excuse me, pre-K through fourth grade. Then in the springtime, spring semester, you would student teach in a special education classroom. So you would do that. Now, if you were straight up early childhood or special education, then you only do one semester of student teaching. Then for our middle level and our secondary students, um, if they would like to teach in a middle school or in a high school, um, we, it's a little bit different. And, and I should say, I forgot to mention in the uh, field practicums, we have the students go out for four weeks. So from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, you're at school. So if you were to be at school at 8 a.m., you're there at 8 a.m. and leave at 4 p.m., you leave at 4. So that gives you kind of a taste of what it's like to be a teacher from the beginning to the end of the day for, for a month. So we do that. Now, with that being said, um, middle level and secondary students are a little bit different. And 
we have what is called methods one and two, where the students are learning how to be a teacher and taking those methods classes of whatever their discipline is, math or science, social studies or English. And um, they go out for 10 weeks for two hours a week. Now, the reason that it's that way is because those students are still coming back to the university because they need to take what we call content classes. And content classes means if, if I'm a social studies person, I may need to come back and I have, like I went to the school for my two hours this morning, but this afternoon at 12 o'clock, I have a history class that I need to come back for. And then maybe at two o'clock, I have another uh, social studies class I have to take. I'll get a so number those... of, 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 of your education students through my Earth and People intro to geography course. Exactly. All the so time. those students have to come back for their content, what we call content. But same thing, then they would um, go through those methods one and two. Uh, they would then um, student teach for, for the 15 weeks for a semester in a local school. And they are all elementary, middle, high school students are all supervised by a uh, university supervisor, which means myself or one of my colleagues, we're going to come out and we're going to ask you for a schedule of when you're teaching and we will come to the school and we will watch you teach. We'll sit down and meet with you and we'll make suggestions to help you to make you that great teacher that that uh, I had when I was in school and that helped me become the person that I am today. So we basically, whatever students need, we try to help them as much as we can. Would you think, how has that changed? You you and I get to share that experience of being student and now faculty in the same department we came through. And I see the changes. I'm assuming you've had the same thing as well, the changes from when you oh. look back and say, oh man, we I've never done that as a student. I never would even thought about that as a student when they're, uh, when they're doing things. Uh, no, absolutely. And a lot of the changes too, um, we're, we're a little unique in the education division because we are, uh, if you will, governed by the university, okay? But we also have to follow the Pennsylvania Department of Education guidelines. Mm. So that's where uh, if, the, if uh, the university has some requirements, but then the Department of Education has requirements. So we, we kind of, we have to do them both. We have to follow both uh, of what is required. And that, uh, uh, just a real quick, uh, like when I, uh, things have changed over the years where, when I graduated, I was certified to teach in kindergarten through eighth grade. So I could have taught in kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Now, over the years, they've broken it down into early childhood, as I mentioned, middle school, high school. So right now, if I was going through, through the department and the system, I would only be able to teach from um, pre-kindergarten, like three, four-year-old children, all the way to fourth grade. And it has become kind of like everything in our, our world, more specialized. Okay. So instead of having the ability to go like eighth grade all the way up to middle school, now you're focused and these students uh, are getting more education in like literacy, for example, teaching the children to read, uh, you know, at earlier ages. And then you go to the middle school where you're focused now. Uh, if you think if all of us uh, folks that are listening, you think back to when you were in middle school, okay, you had such and such a teacher for English, somebody for, uh, you know, English, uh, math, science, social studies. So then it becomes more specialized. So you're getting those specialized. Um, so if, I, if I'm a middle level teacher, I can teach in grades uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then, um, and what's cool about middle school, fourth, fifth, and sixth, I can actually teach everything. I can teach everything. But when I get into seventh and eighth grade, I need to be subject specific. So if I, I like math, which I do, I taught math. So that was my subject specific was me. You would have me for math. And then of course, secondary folks, um, they are grade seven through 12. They can teach seven through 12 and they are subject specific. So if they come through our university department here, education department, they are teaching um Social studies, if that's what they mm -hmm. their concentration was, then they, they have to teach like high school history, high school social studies, or high school English, high school math, high school um, science. Um, and that's another thing. Sciences, we, we offer uh, whatever you're interested in. If you're interested in sciences, you can teach biology, chemistry, um, you name it. You, you can teach general uh, sciences. So um, we offer all those, all those uh, majors to anybody that's interested. 
before we talk a little scholarship um, information that we wanted to, to kind of go over, I wanted to go over with you. The idea, though, that um, from your time as a student to now, you get to see the campus as a as a thing that has changed. What do you think stands out the most for you as the change? Because, you know, this goes out, a lot of alumni listen, and some don't have ever, haven't have thought about coming back to see the tour, and, and it's something that you and I see every day. But what, what think back to when you were that, that that you're still bright eyed Doug. Um but <laughs> younger right. version of you running around in the eighties on campus. Well what what um kind of I guess what sticks out to me is you know our division, the education division is in Biddle Hall. So I spend a lot of time uh in, in Biddle Hall. <laughs> Pardon me. And um we when I was in school here, the our division was at the other end of the uh, of the hall. So we were at the far end of the hall towards the library and the student union. And where I am at now, this was where the president was mm-hmm. and all the offices, nurses were, nursing was over here, uh, dean of student life and so forth was all in this hall. So like I'm my office here, which you can, I'm, I'm in my office to see books and things. This was actually, when I was in school, I think it was like, like a storage closet, you know? So I, that's, that's the part that, that I'm always surprised, but um, just different things. Uh, it is the campus has really grown. Um, you know, certain buildings weren't here. For example, Blackington Hall wasn't here. The Pascarella Center wasn't here when I was in school. Um, and just the additions to the uh, engineering science building, the nursing building. Uh, so different additions. Do- several dorms were put up in that you know time frame since I've graduated. So the campus is beautiful. Um, it certainly has grown over the years and. Um, you know, any students or anybody who would like to come back would sort of definitely love to have you and invite you back to take a tour and just, just, just kind of reminisce and see see how things have changed from when you were a student here. I always think about Biddle, too, growing up on campus with I, information systems on the other wing, where you <laughs> used to be as education yeah. was down there. And I always remember your, where you are now as education, but also president's office campus police yes. for was there for a long time that's um, right that's right that, that is now a completely different because uh, i can't remember was campus campus police was across the hall from the division's office now the president's exactly. office was where the 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 division office is exactly yes exactly yeah. that's uh ah, the changes yes one, one of the other things that you do on campus amongst all this other just out there work with all these kids and all these schools and travel and everything else that goes along with that is you volunteer your time with the alumni board. I do enjoy that. You have a big project coming up that should, we is kind of coming to a head here with the award ceremony and the alumni scholarship. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is? Mostly because like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the, we have the um, alumni golf tournament come up. We do the Mountain Cat tournament. We do other fundraisers, and we always say, you know, portion goes to scholarships. This is a big part of what we're talking about. Exactly, and that's the nice part is uh, being on the alumni board, which is really nice. There's a lot of great people to work with, and one of the things that I am tasked with is the scholarship fund, and. The scholarship fund, is, as, as you mentioned, Matt, is where a lot of those proceeds go. It's an opportunity for us as alumni, you know, to give back to the students here on campus. And uh, we actually have uh, what is called a junior scholarship fund. And we're going to be awarding those to uh, students here in the next, say, two weeks. And um, I believe it's on the 22nd of March. We have the um, award ceremony, and that's where we will uh, give out these these scholarships to students that they can use for tuition, um, books if they need, uh, e-books as well. But things that um, the students need, uh, especially in these times with, uh, uh, you know, rising costs of an education, it's nice to be able to sit down and give back to to the worthy students in all divisions, not just education. This would encompass all divisions, any of the students that the faculty would like to recommend. We have a committee set up that will um, go through the applications and look and based on criteria and and make those awards. And so um, really, anytime you see that, that's the kind of stuff it's going to. And I think it's really nice that um, that goes to 
look and help support those students at, right at the end. It's one of those things that we over the years there are, there's money to help you start. There's not right. always that money to help you end. And go ahead. I'm sorry. That, excuse me. That's a great point, Matt. Wonderful point. Um, yeah, all the all the money is there to help you start school. And then as you're getting through, there's some students that that are quite honestly struggling uh, to finish out their last maybe two semesters, their senior year. And uh, that's what's great. And that's kind of why it was established as a junior scholarship. So if there's any students that perhaps are uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I have to take a year off and before I could get some money to come back to school. This this scholarship can help them, maybe give them just that little bit of incentive or that little bit of push or that little bit of help, however you want to say it, to to finish their schooling and, you know, get into that profession that, that they they want to do and, and that career that they've always maybe dreamt about. So again, when you see any of that come up, I, I encourage you to to support to support those those fundraisers because that's that's where that goes to and and i i know you've taken part in some of those award ceremonies i'm sure you'll be there on the 22nd i've i've had students who i know who come through classes who know me who have gotten the award that come running over with their families right right and and they're just so happy you know it's it's kind of as i said a few minutes ago it's just that extra incentive or that extra push that that they might have needed because they were concerned about finances and so forth, both family as well as the student. So it's just nice to see that. And as I said, an opportunity to give back to the to the school that we all graduated and gave us our careers. Fantastic. Doug, thank you for joining us here. Before I um, let you go, I just want to remind everyone, Engineering Computer Science Reunion 2024 coming up starting March 13th pi.tt slash ECS reunion 24 to register or contact Dave Janicek at 814-269-2081. Can I go back to class, Principal Letney, please? <laughs> you can. Yes, you can. And thank you, Matt, for having me. It was wonderful to be here. I appreciate it. Thanks. And we'll talk to everyone next week. Take care. The Tuck Shop podcast is recorded live on the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown campus. Update your contact information with us by visiting johnstown.pitt.edu slash alumni. Connect with us online via Facebook and LinkedIn. Or consider donating to the university at give to, that's G-I-V-E-T-O dot pit dot edu slash give U-P-J. This has been a production of Quantum Wave Media. Views expressed do not necessarily reflect the opinion of the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown.